podcast. My name is Chris Russell, and I am here today with Rachel Webley, who is a music educator and um, also our international representative in our group as she comes from the Wales in the UK. So, um, Rachel, just so you know, as you talk, Google Hangouts will switch it over to your view. Right. So um, everybody wouldn't see you waving there, which is what you had just done, just, just so <laughs> okay. you know. And uh, I'll let you introduce yourself and your school and what you do, and we'll just talk about things. So. Okay. Cool. So introduce yourself. <laughs> okay, right. So I'm, I'm a music teacher, a classroom music teacher in a school called Cumtawi in the town of Pontadawi in Wales in the United Kingdom. Um, the school is the secondary school, so age-wise it's 11 years to 16, um, and I teach just general class music. I haven't always done that, though. I've been doing that for about 10 years. I started off, I was a double bassist, um, so I started off playing in orchestras, operas, that kind of thing, and had to retire because of shoulder problems. And then I went into teaching instruments, so lower strings, double bass and cello. And then about 10 years ago, I ended up in the classroom. It wasn't where I planned to be, but ended it. And um, I've been there. How's that? That's, that's excellent. Um, there was a little bit of delay for a second. I don't know if that'll show up on the Google Hangouts or not. So at the very end, you're talking about how you had some shoulder issues and then what was the last little part there just in case well, after the shoulder issues i went into teaching instruments so i would travel around schools teaching cello and double bass and then 10 years ago or so moved into the classroom and now teach general music so um you know sort of key stage three for us up until our gcse exams so the exams they take at the end of secondary school that's where we finish and they move on from us then Okay, and then they would head off to university at that point? Yeah, they'd, they'd go and do their A-levels in, in um, a higher education college or a sixth form, and then they go off to university. Okay, so it's a little bit of a different educational system than we're used to here in the U.S. by far. Um, before I go any further, do you want to inform any of our watchers or listeners about Wales and its place in the U.K.? Because a lot of people don't have... Any idea about how that all works out either? Yes, certainly. Well, Wales, it's a small principality within the UK. It's probably one of the oldest countries out of the UK. We, we're Celtic to start with. Um, but for us, the big thing is that we've got a massive musical culture. It's, it's known as the land of song throughout the world, Wales is. Um, and we've got a strong tradition of, well, last night I was doing competitions with other schools called an Eisteddfod, which is um, cultural competitions. So poetry, music, singing, dance. Um, so we've got quite a strong tradition of music. But within the UK, obviously, we've got Scotland, Ireland, and North Wales and England. We've got slightly different education uh, systems. So, uh, whereas Scotland has higher education, we have more mainstream with secondary going to higher. And then England has a different system again where they've got academies and all sorts going on. So, it's, it's, it's interesting to see how the four different ways are split in at the minute. And with Brexit going on at the moment as well, I don't know if anybody knows about Brexit. Um, that's not making things easy either. So it's interesting times in education in Wales at the moment. Now, there's also a whole separate Wel Welsh language. Is that correct? Yes, yes. We've got, I don't speak Welsh. I can speak, you know, Boridar and Diochenbaur. Kerth is the word for music in Welsh. Um, we, we're encouraged to speak Welsh. Unfortunately, I'm not a Welsh speaker, so... You'll hear little words from me every so often, but nothing, nothing spectacular. But the, the village I live in is called Astragunlais. <laughs> that's even harder to pronounce now, school, Kumtawi, so. Wow. Now, how did you stumble onto the ukulele? Now, ukulele has been um, a stronger part of, I think, the UK experience, maybe because of the George Formby stuff, maybe. Um, I... 
I don't know, what, what would you say in terms of, were you brought up with ukulele in the home or around or in the culture, or how did it become a part of what you're doing, especially with the background in being a bassist? Well, for me, George Formby was just something that was black and white films. I saw them as a child, but ukulele never really came onto my radar. It's been growing bigger. It, it wasn't popular, I suppose, like in the US and Canada. It's had a real popularity rise in the last decade, I suppose, maybe a bit longer. But um, in the UK, certainly in the last 10 years, it's just gone mad. I, it came on my radar about five years ago. I bought a ukulele because a couple of kids in school had them. And I, to be honest, I didn't really pick it up. I thought, oh, I've got a uke. And that was <laughs> I just didn't play it. And then three years ago in school, one of the girls in my reg class, so I see her every day, I discovered she played ukulele. And I said, right, do me a favor. Will you help me start a school club? And then I can learn it. You can help us all learn it. And it's, it's grown from there. So whereas a lot of the other people who make play along videos teach ukulele, to, you know, cl whole classes, I started in the club route. So the children who were playing ukulele wanted to play ukulele. They'd come along to a lunchtime group. And we, we all learned together to start with. I was a complete beginner. Um, and literally the first year we had maybe five ukulele instruments, and then we did raffles. So we ran competitions to raise money, and we managed to buy, I think we got up to about 15 or 20 ukuleles, and children were buying their own ukuleles. And so the club started growing. Members of other teachers, members of staff went, oh, I could play ukulele. So they started joining as well. Um, and it's now, we went from one club to another beginner's club. So we had two clubs. Then we had a staff club, and we now this term we've just started teaching it in the actual class to whole classes. So we're putting it into our scheme of work as well. So it's literally gone from yeah, I own a uke, but I don't know how to play it. To I'm teaching it almost every day to everybody. Um, Is there any community involvement as well? Is there anybody in? in the larger area that you live in, or is there any ukulele clubs there? There's, there's loads of little ukulele clubs, which I knew nothing about. Um, and when we started the school one, there was another member of staff who could also play, and she was like, oh, shall we join an outside club? So last year we joined, it's called the Cool Hand Ukes, which is a club in a local town. And uh, so we go there once a week. And I, I want to start my own club one day sort of for a community but i felt i needed to know how to run a club <clears throat> I, I you know i've done ensembles i've done orchestras but i've never done something involving adults so um we started going to this one and it's great it's completely different from school i don't i'm not in charge i just go along and i can just jam and enjoy it and i've obviously learned an awful lot from that as well but the age for that go, excuse me goes from I think from about 15 up to, I think it's about 86. <laughs> so so the, the age range is huge and we're, we're smack in the middle of it and I, we really enjoy it because it's there's no pressure. It's just something we can enjoy and play. Where do they meet that, that Cool Hand Lukes or Ukes or whatever? They, they meet in a, a local town called Neath in the local YMCA. Okay. So, and I, the lady who runs that, I'll give her a shout out, Jude Randall's fantastic. She does about four clubs a week. So she has a couple during the daytime, an evening one, a junior one. So she's she's running that over there. Um, but there, I know of other little ukulele clubs as well around the place. So it, it's definitely on the rise. One of the things that we hear about here in the United States is the tavern ukulele scene in the UK. Have you have you seen any of those groups where people are just getting together in pubs and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. playing and singing? <laughs> I've, I've not been to one personally yet, but no, I've definitely, I've seen the videos and I've heard people. And I, for the last two years, I've gone to the Ukulele Festival of Wales, which is, it's not a huge event yet. It's quite local actually, but um, and people travel from all over the place and camp. Now, I haven't camped because it's quite local to us, but it's, that's a great event. You start off on a Friday night in the pub, um, but I'm, I'm aiming to go to the Friday night session this year. So When, yeah, when does that happen? When does that occur? 
end of june so that's something to look forward to as well yeah and th that's when a lot of the local clubs get together and join in and play so there's a big jam where everybody can play to as well as different workshops and open mic sessions and things so i'm seeing behind you potentially a u base behind you is that what i'm seeing oh yes 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 that was a, that was quite strange actually because when i started playing ukulele i um I didn't want, I thought, yeah, I'm playing something new, not interested in anything else to do with uke. And somebody said, oh, what about a bass uke? And I said, no, no, I'm not learning anything else new. What, one new instrument, that's enough. Until I found out that it's exactly the same as a double bass. And I also, if I am going to go like that just for a minute, can you see the bass guitar? <laughs> so I, I, that's my instrument now is bass guitar before the ukulele rather um and as soon as i found out that a bass ukulele was the same as a double bass well i think i had one 12 hours later i'd gone over to our <laughs> local music shop and the guy who runs it went i said you got any bass ukes he went yeah yeah i've got a couple here and i, I bought the uke which is a fretless one so okay. i i love it because it's just like playing my double bass now does your husband think you're crazy mm, yeah yeah. In fact, the, you can see the mandolin, that's his. He doesn't play it. He can't play the mandolin, but he owns a mandolin. <laughs> but so, I, I'm not the only crazy one, but yeah, he, he's, he's got used to it over the years, I think. Now, one of the things that I like about your videos, not only, again, are they just, you know they're good and, and you know that you can use them in the classroom, but also is that you're using Windows to create the videos versus um, like iMovie with Dr. Reese and I think um, also Chris Gilbert and then Andy Ramos and I are both using LumaFusion on the iPad to do them. So um, anything you want to say about, I know you made a full video, I watched the whole thing about how to create videos using Filmora, I think was is the app. Is there anything more you want to share about that process as a Windows user? Yes, certainly. When we first started the club in school, we, we went down the paper route. Like everybody else, I used to print out the chord sheets and we'd sit in a circle. And I got, I, I'm not a singer. I hate singing. I've, I've learned to sing as a music teacher over the years, but it's not, it really isn't my thing. So me learning to play the ukulele whilst singing and trying to teach other children, it was okay. And then about three months in, big shout out to Dr. Jill Reese, we discovered one of her videos and it was Surfing USA. And that changed things for us because suddenly I didn't have to worry about my singing. I could concentrate on learning how to play and encouraging the children. Um, and so from then on in, I needed to know how to do it. I got a little bit of experience. I used to build websites and things, and I, I love playing graphics. Um, so I, I wanted to know how to make the video. So I watched your video, first of all, because as soon as I discovered the word play-alongs into delving into what other play-alongs were, so I discovered yours and Andy's and obviously Dr. Jill's. Um, so I, I watched your video on how to make one, and I thought, great, great, yeah, but even though I've got an iPad and I've got a Mac, I'm more comfortable on a PC. So I did a little bit of research and realized I could do it using a video editor. I'm not, I'm, I don't have a huge amount of experience on video editors, but I understood the layers thing. So I, I just did a bit of research on an easy, basic video editor for the PC. And Filmora came up as one of the best ones for beginners. So going on your logic on how you set up the time frames and things, I just transferred that knowledge onto Filmora. Um, and, it, you know, it takes a little bit of practice. And, you know, my first couple of videos are and, and not that great. But now I, oh, I absolutely love it. And I'm starting to find out new tweaks I can use with F Filmora and with the videos. So each video I do... I learned something new to do with it. But it's, it is really all down to you, Dr. Jill, uh, Andy, and everybody else who's made the play-alongs because I just got totally inspired by them. I think it's a fantastic way of learning for us and for the children. So, do you, Now, your kids that are at your school, is it a private school or is it a public school? No, 
Oh, it's a public school. And in fact, we're, we're what's known as a valley school. We're not in a particularly rich part of the country. There's a lot of poverty around. So one of my big things about really sharing the ukulele was the fact that it was accessible to so many children. Um, and in fact, last year, we were really lucky we got funding. Um, there's a local supermarket chain, Tesco. I, I don't know if you, it's, it's a bit like Walmart. It's our big okay. thing. And they run a charity, which is it's called Bags of Help. And each time you go shopping, you get a token and you put it in for your local charity. Well, I got I got our ukulele club into this. Um, so we were in the local store. We did a big drive in school to get our tokens put into the box. And we managed to get funding for £4,000. Now, that's probably about five and a half, six thousand dollars $6,000. So that's a huge amount of money for ukuleles. So we managed to get um, going on your advice. I looked into caramels. We ended up buying camis ukes. So I bought, I think it was 40 concert-sized camis ukes, and we got a PA system and little amplifiers and microphones bought. Some other nice ukuleles as well, but basically got enough to get us up and running so that we can give the opportunity to any child in the school who wants to learn now, can come along to various clubs of lunchtime and learn and there is money available that if we need to help out a child to buy them a uke we'll do that as well so it's it's trying to get it to those children who can't necessarily afford to go and buy a violin or have flute lessons or have piano lessons that they get the chance so that's been a really big part of why we do it bunch of questions that just came out of that how many music teachers do you have in your school that's that was one and how are they reacting to the ukulele okay uh, there are two of us um my um boss my head of department he just thought i was crazy to start with he went yeah let her get on with it if she wants to start a club that's fine and i'd be wandering around the department playing he's going to just go away and um, well, put it this way, I bought him a ukulele for Christmas this year. <laughs> He's finally, I've broken him. He could see how much the children were enjoying it. And the fact that I kept saying, yeah, we'll do a ukulele today in a class. And he'd come in and see, you know, some really hard to handle classes, sitting there, really enjoying, concentrating, playing. And so he suggested just before Christmas, well, maybe we'll put it in the scheme of work. So I was like, great. Bought him a ukulele and we just bought his classroom another uh, 20 camis ukes for his room. And he's got a few little sort of um, octopus, little coloured sopranos to play. Um, and he's doing it with his class. So he's had to learn. So he's on the play alongs and watching them. But he's gone. It's taken me two years to break him. But I did. That's that's pretty amazing. Um, that was just one one thought, and, and that's that's kind of neat. Second question was um, the camis ukes. How are they holding up? Really good. We don't have any humidity problems. So in terms of wood or anything like that, I've got to say I've bought a couple of caramels, and other than the sort of sharp frets, they they're not bad. But I just put the camis just a little bit above them. Out of, we've, I think it's maybe 60 we've bought in total now. And I haven't had an issue with any of them. They've been absolutely superb. And I'd, I'd recommend, you know, the children who are buying their first ukuleles, um, I'm saying to parents, look, you know, buy a camis. Then they move on to better ones once they've got a little bit better then. But I've got to say, so far, they've been absolutely fantastic. And I've got... We, our technology department in school have built the most brilliant racks for them. I'll, uh, I'll post a picture on Facebook later, which uh, my rack holds almost 60 ukuleles and it's on wheels. Wow. So I can just move it around everywhere. It's absolutely great. So we've got two of those racks now and the aim is to fill them both up with ukes. So, so my, my last question, which yeah. is kind of based around that, is I, I struggle still with students... Americans, I don't know, maybe maybe it's also cultural in terms of how students behave. But I, as I've talked about in the past, um, in our school, and we're looking at ages basically 11 through 14 in our school. That's kind of where we kind of fall in, a little bit younger, I think. Some, but a little bit, you've got some more older students yeah. than we do. Um, but anyway, long story short is 
kids in our school, the way that they've got it set up at my particular school, is that they have to take some kind of music, and we only have three different type of performance classes. So you're either in band, orchestra, or choir, and if you're not in band or orchestra, you're thrown in choir. So um, those kids don't necessarily always want to play, even if you're doing songs that they like. And it's funny even how much they'll complain about certain songs that, that they don't really like that much. Do you, do you see those attitudes too from students, or are kids easier going in, in Wales? Um, I, I get the best of both worlds in that I've seen what they like. When they come to the club, that's their choice. I don't nag them. If they want to play the ukulele, they come along, and inevitably, quite quickly, they get their own ukes. So these are the kids who are at home, they want to learn it, they, they, they play it at home, they come in each week and we'll, we will so we can do songs, boom, 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 because they, they'll just play them. They're not as great at singing, but they will always, <laughs> they, they get involved with the play, no problem at all. The classes, now that's a different thing, because suddenly there are kids in there who, they haven't chosen to play ukulele, I've decided to do it. And initially they're all, yeah, great, that's fantastic. And I do notice them that there might be one or two in a class who get a little bit bored or the inevitable thumbs are getting a little bit sore or they haven't managed to pick it up straight away. So, you know, they lose a little bit of interest. So I'm starting to see that creeping in a little bit at the minute. So I'm purposely either working extra hard with those children to get them playing or I'm saying, right, well, let's get you on the cajon drum or... Let's get you on the tamar. Oh, so they're not getting frustrated with the ukulele. They're doing something else involved. In fact, today I had a class who I could see the girls at the back had got a little bit disinterested. So I said, right, no problem. Tambourines, singing. Off we go. And straight away they did, in fairness. They did start singing and playing along and they enjoyed it. But I, I, am, I can see the difference with the classes compared to the club. So that's something I've got to look at. How are we going to uh, focus our efforts? I guess, okay, that's perfect. That makes total and complete sense to me. And, I mean, like, when you have a student that, that doesn't listen and isn't participating, do you guys make phone calls or emails home too to those parents, or do you try to just deal with it there at that time, or does that work contacting parents? I, I'm just kind of curious from a, what's it like culturally there? We we haven't we're not in that realm yet that individual teachers need to contact parents. We've got a system where if I've got a child who is either causing issues or I I've got problems with them, I go to what's known as their head of year. We need to speak to them. They might phone home. So we, we're not in a problem where we have to answer emails or contact parents all the time. There is a system in place to that. Um, but generally speaking, the kids. It's well the ones who are going to cause trouble. Uh, and it's a case of, like, you either play or you don't have the uke. And you can do writing at the back where the rest of us are doing it. So I've got that to play with. But I haven't had to use it too often yet. And as I say, if I can see the one, because I know the children quite well, because I'm te you know, I've been teaching them for a couple of years, I can then go, right, let's get you off there and get you doing something else. And inevitably, the boys will be quite happy to go on a drum. And the girls normally be quite happy to sing, but I've had a few who've requested kazoos lately. <laughs> they saw us, the, our, our uke club played in our local I Stedford, the school I Stedford, um, just which is our National Saints Day, St. David's Day. And we played a song, Delilah, by Tom Jones. It's one of our favourites. And we, we do the trumpet solo in the middle with kazoos. Well, loads of the kids saw this. And now they're like, oh, can we play kazoo, miss? I'm like, okay, that's a little bit crazy. I don't know how many kazoos I can cope in a classroom, though. <laughs> now, I'm hoping that, I, again, I don't know how Google Hangouts is going to work out with this, but you're, I've been getting pretty good audio, but your video has been kind of freezing. So it'll be interesting right. to see if it records locally in both spots, and that's what it puts, I don't know, we'll find out what it, what it does. Um, no worries. Um, I am also really interested, the whole name Ukuleleans, where did yeah. that come from? And uh, I noticed, I, I saw it when you were moving around earlier, you're also wearing a Ukuleleans t-shirt. 
I am. There we go. This is my merch. Look, if I turn around, hang on. Hopefully, can you see that? Well, I've got a That's... big delay on, on, on video right now. Oh, no worries. I've turned around just to show the, the T-shirt, but it's, it's our ukulele and graphics that we made. But it was another teacher. We were trying to think of names, and we were looking, Kumtawe, ukulele, no, nothing fitted. And she was singing the song by Sting, Englishman in New York. And I'm an Englishman, I'm a, uh, sorry, I'm an alien, I'm a legal alien. And she went, oh, that would fit, I'm a ukulele. And instantly I could see little aliens play. And so that was, that's where the name ukulele came from. The teacher, the teacher went, legal alien, and I went, ukulele, and it grew from there. Now, have you had any feedback from other people in the UK about your videos? Have you, have you heard from anybody that's using them in other UK schools? Um, I haven't heard anything from schools. Our local club, the Cool Hand Ukes, quite a few of the members there use them just, just to play and practice along. We don't do those songs. We do different songs. But no, it's, I haven't really had much contact with... You can play along Facebook. I think he's a UK uke teacher, but apart from that, so far I haven't really sort of come across anybody else who's doing it um, sort of full time in school. So it'd be interesting to find out if there are you know, the uke teachers in UK who are using them, or if they're doing their own play along videos. I haven't found any yet, but maybe they're doing them on local networks or something. Yeah, and, and perhaps they're afraid of, of legal issues. Now, when another question, I'm just keep firing them at you. Um, when, when you see the songs that we're making here in the U.S., and a lot of them come from our own United States folk heritage or music heritage, do you find that you can use a lot of those songs, or is there a lot of the stuff that you just go, what are these crazy Americans listening to and, and and what kind of a folk song what what's the reaction because i don't really see you doing many like welch folk songs although that'd be kind of interesting if you did but what what's that like coming from the uk perspective well we got loads of welsh folk songs and it's something that i probably will look at doing i did, one of the very first ones i did was tom jones it's not unusual so Tom Jones is still massive in Wales. So that was sort of top of the list to do, and then we ended up doing Delilah. But there are loads of Welsh folk songs, but they're all in Welsh. So at some point, I might look at doing them, but of course, there aren't original recordings really to go on. They either tend to be male voice choirs, which I can't imagine us playing along to those, <laughs> um, or maybe trying to look at some of the local Welsh bands that have done folk things but no I, I enjoy looking at all the American and the Spanish folk songs that people are doing at the minute and a lot of them we know you know the, the, a lot especially the American world things we've heard and we know the songs um but no, it's something I do want to look at in the future doing a little bit more Welsh traditional um just so that we can get our music out there a little more as well now when you you're talking about um finding uh, Dr. Reese with uh, the Beach Boys. Are, are yeah. Do the Beach Boys have a following in the UK? Yeah. yeah, massive, massive. Everybody loves the Beach Boys. Loads of the American songs, you know, they, they, anything that's been a big hit, we generally know. Same as I'm sure you know, you might not know some of the songs I'm putting on because they're UK hits. But, you know, when you're looking at things like ABBA, um, which obviously is Sleech anyway, so that's probably not the best example. Um, but there'll be songs that big hits that we can queen at the minute is everywhere because of the latest Bohemian Rhapsody. I'm waiting to see who does Bohemian Rhapsody. That would <laughs> be one of the best songs to do. That would take ages to work out, but uh, that might be one for the future. Um, but yeah, no, looking at the big international songs. You know, the things that kids love, the problem I've got, like I'm sure many of the people playing the videos, is what I deem as modern, the children have heard of. So I try and look at what works for the ukulele, not necessarily what the children know. I think, well, I can teach them new songs. They, you know, 
it'd be good for them. But I'd like to look at what works for the ukulele and then take it from there. So I think the latest one I've just done, 10, 10, 10 by Paolo Nantini. It's a song I've known. I, I always thought he was Jamaican. I didn't realise he was Scottish. <laughs> um, and I, I hear that and just went, oh, that would sound quite nice for the uke. And then when I realised the original key was C, F and G, I thought, right, it's in C, we've got to do it. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I like to children's song knowledge, shall we say. And half the time they go, no, never heard of that one. Okay. But they learn it, so... Yeah, that's the other side of teaching the students that I teach. Um, so often, they they will push back because they don't like a particular song or that's not something they like. And it's like, boy, our culture has shifted a lot because I don't think I would have ever growing up told my teacher what songs we would or wouldn't learn. But man, today this, I don't know if you guys, you guys have Netflix just like we do. And this Netflix generation where they, it, they choose what entertains them at any second, you know, is, is so different. It, it makes me want to drop my boys, my own two sons that are, are 10 and the other one turns 7 tomorrow. Um, I would love to drop them into about 1979 with a TV set. And you get three channels. And if you want to change a channel, you have to get up off of the couch to change a channel. That's what I'd like to do to them. <laughs> Yes, I get, I haven't got children, but I understand it completely. It's instant. If it's not instant, uh, lost interest, off to something else, yeah. Interesting. So what other things do you have planned in the near future for your own channel? And oh, and speaking of your shirt, you talk at merch, but do you, do you guys sell those online anywhere, or is that just something that you do locally? No, it's it's just something we do locally for the children in school. We had a few t-shirts printed up when we first started. Um, plans for the future. I I used to love building websites, and I haven't built a ukulele one yet. Um, whether I'll get round to it, it's something me like you. I love reading the blogs. It's just having the time to do it. But it's only now I think I feel confident enough in my own teaching of you to start to put my ideas out there i'm still very much learning at the minute just to give a uk perspective of teaching you and i don't think we've got anywhere in the uk to come together yet fit you know the various facebook groups but it might be nice to you know some of the things about maybe later on this year start a blog and put my experiences down just like everybody else to see if it can help other people as well so yeah that's definitely for the future is there any um, anything that, that really sticks out to you that, that you've learned that's changed the way that you teach or that's, I don't know, just changed the way that you play yourself? Is, is there anything that you've come across lately? Um, I, just from ukulele, I've always been, because I was classically trained, reading dots. It was all about reading notes. And even playing bass guitar, I'd be much... I can read tab, I can play to you a bit, but playing the ukulele is, like you mentioned the other day, it's making me listen to those chords, it's making me work out the theory of the chords again. And that's something that's been completely different. I've never had to do that before, really. And so that's, that's been a massive benefit. And it's, it's helping me help kids in school as well with that kind of thing you know you, it's all there it's at the back of the brain from years ago when you did you know the various degrees and things but suddenly i'm using it in a practical basis and the the love of music again mm -hmm. i think you, i think you all go through stages where we fall in and out of what we want to do and you know i've ended up doing something i didn't intend to do saying is this really what i want to do I think the uke has brought me i love going into work each day again where two years on, you know, what's happening next. Now, I, I, and it's just happy. It just makes everybody happy. I do um, a break duty on a Friday morning outside our main canteen where we've got to stop children being silly in the car. And I play my uke. And every week I put a smile on people's face. And they know it's Friday because I'm playing my ukulele. I'm happy. And it sort of just passes through a few other people then as well. So it's, it's brought music back to being a, a nice thing in my life again. So. 
Has there been any other ukulele stuff that you found yourself falling into, like having to visit the ukulele orchestra of Great Britain or anything like that? It is, I haven't been to any concerts, to be honest. You know, we've got the ukulele festival of Wales, which there are some good players go to that, but. The, the the orchestra of Great Britain I was aware of but never really watched. But I think they're, they're immensely talented. Um, the one thing I've recently got into though is uh, effects pedals. It's costing me a fortune. I've I've used effects because I did a lot with electric strings a few years ago, electric cellos and electric violins. So I did a bit with effects pedals. Oh, I started building a pedal board last year, and yeah, I just had another three pedals for the post today. So that's that's what I'm going to be looking at over the weekend now, is how can I manipulate the ukulele and make it sound different, and then take that into school and go, look at this, and just get maybe some of the boys would be, you know, more into their guitars and into their Jimi Hendrix stuff, going, yeah, we can do that on a uke as well. So finding different areas to try and encourage the children with, but yeah, pedals is that that's a new um, what what's the term? U.S. ukulele acquisition syndrome. Syndrome, yes, yes. So, yeah, I we did the gas one a few years ago with bass guitars and everything, but yeah, that is pedals is going to be my new thing and looking at you know what I can do with electric ukulele, so we can encourage children to use it for sort of composing in the ukulele. Now, how much do you do with medley, like, um, or not medley, but melody, <laughs> sorry. Um, what do you do with melody? Do you, do you spend a lot of time talking about tablature or reading individual notes, or do you leave that to other parts of your curriculum? Um, I've done a little bit. What I was trying to do, um, certainly before Christmas, was I got a load of tabs of Christmas, traditional Christmas uh, carols and songs, so that... Not the children in class that I haven't really gone down the tab route with whole class, but the children in club, if they could play ukulele, rather than them just playing on keyboards, playing Christmas things, I was giving them the uke tab and they picked it up like that. They didn't, didn't bat an eyelid, they just absorbed everything and within literally minutes they were rattling around melodies using the tabs. So that's, that is something that I do want to push a little bit more in the future and maybe these are very simple straightforward fab uh, fabs, tabs but I think it's something that I can sit it's not something I know about too much myself yet so finger picking um, playing melodies with chords I need to learn a bit more about it and then I can encourage the children otherwise they'll just know more than me and that, <laughs> we know that's not a good <laughs> now you are playing generally electric bass, right? That was your most recent. Okay, yes. and and you did. Do they they do they use tablature for electric bass, or is that all written out in terms of actual pitch? There is there is tabs available, um, because I read notes. I'm comfortable reading those. I play in um, a swing band, and. Um, and it's, you know, traditional five-piece swing band, saxophone, piano, drums, vocals. And I have full dots for that. I play off notes. Um, I'm quite happy reading. So just give me the name of the chords and I'll make a bass line. Tabs, I can read, um, but I'm not as comfortable with it. I know how to work. My argument has always been tabs don't teach you everything you need to know. So unless you know the song it's much more difficult to actually learn it from a tab. Having said that, I've got um, a bass guitarist in school at the minute, my pupils, who is playing couperon, je ne sais quoi, which is a really traditional cello duet on bass guitar because I've written it out in tab for her. So she plays it in tab, I play the notation. It's a beautiful duet. So that's sort of mixing, mixing all the forms there. So I definitely want to push in the future. Now you said you play in a swing band. Have you have you heard the Jive Aces? No, no. Jive oh. Aces, oh, as in the song or the band? Yeah, the band. Yes. Uh, I'm saying, yeah, I'd, I probably would recognise the name if I saw them on YouTube or something. Um, but no, it's 
this is awful. I don't listen to swing music. I just enjoy playing it. It's one of those bizarre things where it's, um, I enjoy one genre of playing, but I, it's not one that I actually listen to. Duke, what's the, the um, traditional jukebox band? That, that's one of my favorite ones. Okay. I'm just trying to think. They're... And the whole reason with the Jive Aces is that they do yeah. some wonderful ukulele stuff. The lead singer plays uke. Oh, right. Well, I will check them out then, definitely. And, and the song that I always have on replay is a song called Bring Me Sunshine. It's a Louis Prima song, but they do a great version of it with ukulele featured on it. Oh, right. Oh, I will. I'll check that out a bit later now. And that's a UK band. They were on the uh, one of the UK's Got Talent or something like that. Britain's Got Talent years ago or something. So it's worth checking out. Oh, I will, yeah, I'll definitely check them out. Yeah, yeah. So I'm trying to think of what other things that I should be asking you just in case I, I don't want to forget anything because our opportunities to talk are pretty limited. Is there anything you wanted to ask me about since we're talking to each other face-to-face? -face? Uh, yes, well, I, I'm interested to know a little bit about your background. I know you've, you've, you've done your own um, videos yourself, but have you enjoyed the whole ukulele? Because I think you can into it quite late as well didn't you yeah so um, as, as a, yeah. <laughs> we we have this culture in the united states where um there's been these peaks and valleys of ukulele popularity and yeah. um i was born in 72 so it puts me at 46 so um when i was growing up the ukulele was two things it was kind of a freak instrument due to the kind of act of Tiny Tim. Yeah. So he, I mean, really, um, even today, I, I will go to a music conference if I'm playing ukulele, there's still a teacher who'll come to me and say, oh, can you play Tiptoe Through the Tulips? Because that's the, you know, he sang in falsetto and had the, just the weird appearance. So people, people really, that really put a twist on the ukulele. And the other side of it was it was always a Hawaiian folk instrument. So as I grew up, I never really saw it as a legitimate instrument, I'd, I'd say. And, and that wasn't trying to be mean. It just wasn't. And in our, in our education, growing up as, as an American student in a, both a public schools and then into the university level, uh, we never talked about the ukulele as an as a instrument to use in a school setting. Never, never. So it wasn't until about 2009 that I started seeing some students carrying them around. And that's when I was teaching at the high school level. And then somewhere around 2015, again at this position, where we hold two concerts a year. One is at the beginning of the year, one's at the end of the year. Um, there's this big gap in the middle of the year that we used to have to fill with something else because there was no concert. And you're not going to learn your music for the end of the year, starting in January, or everybody's going to melt down. Yeah. So what we did was, or what I did was, I eventually bought a ukulele after reading article after article after article about it and thought, well, I'll give this a try and see what it's like. And I bought one. I bought the cheapest one that I could get that was still a ukulele. I thought, well, this might work. And I brought it to my school, and my principal or administrator said, no, we're not going to pay for it. And I even brought it to the district, which is the next level up, and they said, well, we support you, but no. So then I asked my parents, and we raised enough money to buy a set of ukuleles, and it's all kind of history after that point. But I didn't expect to fall in love with it. And uh, But here I am, you know, 36 ukuleles later, so that's kind of, <laughs> that's kind of where I'm at. So, yeah, and it just, it just really struck me. I was just talking to Dr. Reese uh, yesterday about it, but going to my first jam session with where there was retired people that were playing and singing ukulele when they hadn't been involved with music, many of them for most of their entire lives. As a music educator, I just looked at that and just went, this is exactly what we want people to be doing. We want them to be yeah. making music for their life. Yep. Yeah, so why would we not be encouraging this? So I, I still get pushback from people about why are we teaching ukulele in choir? It's quite honestly, there are also people that don't sing. So it, the real message is we don't want to do anything we don't want to do. But unfortunately, our educational system doesn't really allow for that, you know. Um, <laughs> I don't know. So that's, that's kind of how I got tricked into it with my own background as a tuba player 
and is an operatic tenor. So, you know, never would have expected to be uh, teaching ukulele or blogging or making videos for it or anything. But that's that's kind of my own past. Yeah, that's really, really interesting. But it, it's mad how we end up doing something we had no envisaged for years ago. And just like you, the ukulele, it wasn't on my radar. It was never counted as a um, but it beats teaching the whole class. <laughs> you know, it really, and the children get, they, they get the enjoyment. We do an awful lot of keyboard work with them. And I, I do think they're benefiting from having a different instrument. And as I try, lately I've got into trying to say to them, look, it's hard. You're not going to pick it up and think, when was the last? time you learnt a new skill and I'm thinking I said well you know when you started riding a bike you fell off but you carried on when you started walking we're crawling you got up and you carried on don't give up just because you can't do it and we're back to that instant thing then um but because you can get those first few chords quite easily you can see the look in their eyes and when they pick it up it doesn't matter what age somebody is. That's the beauty of it. They could be 11 years old. They could be, I've got teachers in their 50s in school learning. And you see that same look of, wow, I've never been able to do music before. Look at me now, I'm doing a concert. And it's something we as music teachers are used to. But when you see that coming from a geography teacher or a maths teacher or a year seven and 11 year old pupil, you just think, yeah. That's why we do what we do at the end of the day. Well, that's fantastic. I'm, I'm totally in agreement with you. The, 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 the sad part to me is when I get a student that just gives up, and then what they'll do is they'll yeah. play C6 <laughs> for weeks at a time, you know, and then later you just ask them, they go, well, I don't get it. And I, I put everything... We, I don't know if you guys use an online learning system or not, if that's part of your education system. But we use something called Schoology in our district, and I'm actually able to stack all the videos inside there by unit. And I usually teach by chord, and I you know, just reinforce that chord with both the kind of the skill drills that you and I have created, and then you know, just reinforcing those chords. And I go back to them and I say, well, if you're not trying in class, have you checked out? Because we've got some ukuleles that we check out as a library, you know, kind of library system. Have you checked out a ukulele? Have you practiced at home? No. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, well, if you're not willing to work in class and you're not willing to do any work outside of class, how do you expect to learn that skill? You know, yeah. Yeah. nothing nothing comes with just water, you know, water and sun. It just, it just doesn't. I know, we're not, unfortunately, we can't teach everybody to love the ukulele, but for, you know, if you look at the percentage of the ones who learn something from it and the ones who don't, I had a great kid yesterday who said the ukulele made him angry. <laughs> we all, the, the class turned on him and went, how can that, hang on, how can that make you angry? And he got it, he realised what he had just said. And he, he went on the cajon and he was okay after that. He took his anger out on the drum. <laughs> but, you know, if we can get through to those children, you know, just a few of the children, we know it's working at the end of the day then. Yeah, and then I do get the kids that actually go home and they're writing their own music too. Um, that Grace Vanderwall thing was a huge thing. I don't know if your students paid attention to that or not, but... But, you know, having an 11-year-old writing her own music and winning America's Got Talent, that that woke some people up. Mm -hmm. uh, our pupils, it was a little bit before we really got going in school, but they, they, a lot of them know and they watched videos of her. But for our GCSE music course, which is the main exam before school, they have to do composition. And we've now started seeing the first few kids coming through writing their songs using ukulele. Um, I came across a girl yesterday who was just, and I said, what are you doing? So I'm writing a song. And she was only using three or four chords. They were really basic chords. But her strumming that, it meant she could sing, write down her lyrics, 
write down a core progression and starting to see that coming through. So it might be in a few years' time we've got kids who are writing songs left, right and centre. So um, we'll, we'll have to wait and see with that one, but I hope so. Now, what do you guys use for technology? Do, does every student have access to a device or does it bring their own device or are there school provided devices? What does that look like in your school? Um, we're unfortunately we're in the position where money is very tight at the minute, not just in our school, throughout the country. So we bought um, three sets of iPads, 16 iPads for the whole school, not just the music department, uh, a number of years ago, which was great. We went mad using them in music, got all the apps, we, they were using Garage Band, left, right, and center. And they're just coming to the end of their lives, those iPads. They're getting to the point they're not upgrading anymore. And we're not quite sure where we're going to go from that. So we've got mini Macs in our department, and we've got some um, Airbooks. So we do have some Apple stuff. We run Sibelius. Is that, do you use that in the States? That's our main <laughs> notation. And obviously, we're using um, GarageBand. We did have Logic, but we can't. We just can't afford to keep up the, with the upgrade to that. Um, so we, we try and keep technology. Both myself and the other music teacher love technology anyway. So we both try and, we try and think of ways of making the money at the minute, thinking possibly doing what we did with the ukuleles and trying to get some funding for um, some iPads in school again. But trying to keep on top of the technology. The children are not allowed to use their own devices. It's a shame. But the school policy is no phones. They they have their phones. Yeah, we know they do, <laughs> but they're not encouraged to use them in school, unfortunately. So, but we we obviously we encourage the children to use their own devices at home and are showing them how to use the things. So they you know they're all aware of Garage Band if they got Mac devices. Um, I love the number of kids who call our video playalongs apps. No, they're videos. It's for whatever reason the children think that's an app. I don't know how they think we make them. I have no idea. But uh, when you explain, no, it is actually a video. They're quite shocked at that. So, again, we're back to the instant thing. They want to be able to press a button and everything comes up on the screen and away you go. I was just wondering if they do any, like, composition with, like, the online programs like NoteFlight or Flat.io, if you've, if you've had a chance to try any of that, because they do have some ukulele stuff and being a google person i know you're a google person as well um i don't know if you've tried it but flat does have an extension for google slides and for um, docs that allows you to write in tablature i don't know if you've played with that at all i haven't come across that i'll have to check that one out as well yeah and this, this is where talking to other teachers especially across the world you know I, i'm not a massive Online, I, I, I go on Facebook, but I'm not in all the groups. So it's great knowing about all these things, and I, I'll check them out and pass them on as well. And so, yeah, it's another one I'll check out. Yeah, it just might be worth, especially like flat, um, note flight too. In both cases, if you have kids that are composing stuff on their own, they may actually find it easier just to, to interface with one of those. And they do have free versions as well. Yeah, well, I'll definitely check that out. Just something worth checking out, and then, you know, I don't know, just just kind of fun. So it's always neat to hear about other stuff. Now, I have one, I think, really a last question for you, um, unless there's anything else we need to cover. But um, we have a magazine here that's sponsored by Bonanza Magazine, or Bonanza Ukulele. It's a, literally a small company, two-person company, husband and wife team that started making ukuleles a few years ago, and they don't. You know, I think they're up to number 400, so they don't sell a ton of them. But the the owner decided to start making a free magazine where people anybody's welcome to write an article. And so I've been writing some articles about school stuff. But the other day, a person from the UK wrote in and said, I don't want to read your magazine. It's so blatantly United States-centered that I just don't want to read it anymore. So my, my, my kind of final question would be is, what would be different about a UK perspective, maybe towards ukulele or music, that we might not have as Americans? If that is that a fair question, mm. just kind of how, asking if you can educate me and and what would make us have a better global perspective 
than we've got. I think, again, we're back to, at the minute, we're back to funding. Um, music is being driven out of schools in England, Wales and Scotland at the minute. They brought in a few years ago something called the English Baccalaureate, which was a new set of grades where basically they didn't want children doing the arts. So that's mm. had a huge impact in England. Wales, we've been a bit luckier in that they sort of ring-fenced funding for um, music in schools, but the instrumental lessons took a huge hit. So, I don't know, 15 years ago, every school would provide free instrumental lessons. These days, it's far and few between who gets a free lesson. We are lucky. We still, our head is great. He's supportive. We still provide free instrumental lessons to children. But I, it's, it's so much of it is to do with squeezing the arts out that anything um, that we can do for the children is a bonus at the minute. And it, it's frightening. It really is. But I, I think the tide is turning. I think people are starting to realise, hang on, we're losing out here. If we lose music in schools, it'll be gone. You won't have the teachers to carry it on in the future. So I think there's been a big push in UK over the last few years just to keep education, music education surviving and maybe we start to turn, we'll ha we're going to have to see in terms of what happens now in the next, well, literally few weeks of Brexit because that's going to have a huge impact on the economy. Um, but other than that, it, I think it's more, people just think, oh, it, it's just the art, it's just music, it doesn't really matter. They're not realising that A, it'll have a huge impact on culture, on education as a whole, but also the economy. It's a billion pound industry. I think it's one of the biggest industries in the UK. So it's that's what we're all, as music educators in the UK, looking at funding. And it's not the way we should be working. We should be working to go, right, let's look at the best ways of doing things, not let's look at how we can do things. Mm -hmm. So that's that's something we're keeping an eye on, certainly. And then in your school, you 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 now have these clubs that are meeting, and are they always during lunch, or the, and or is it just do you have some after school or before school as well? No, at the minute they're just lunch times. Um, purely, we got after school. Um, I take a string group one day. We've got choir going in another day, so they're sort of taking up the after school slots already. What I am thinking about doing, though, is starting a local community in the evenings, a community group, which obviously I'll try and get the kids involved in in school. So that would be something. It might even be to do, we are a community school, so I, I might be able to swing it that I do it through school and get community involved that way. But I'd love to get adults involved as well as the children. So that's something that I'm looking at doing keeping the school involved but doing it in the evenings because having a half an hour slot at lunchtime and kids are coming in late or they're still eating or I've got to dash off to a meeting it's not ideal so it'd be nicer to have that longer slot so that again something for the future that is definitely we um do these musicals you know yeah. there there's these junior versions of these musicals so um we're in the midst of that and that will be done in the end of March but one of the things that I'm considering is offering something called GCEA University to my parents of my students and giving them the opportunity to come in maybe four times over the course of April and May and do a ukulele session and just trying to build something there as well. I don't know. It's just something that's in my brain. I haven't quite gotten everything around it, but... Right now, my focus is doing other things. So, you know, not only the play-alongs, but, you know, just my normal teaching job and yeah. all that other stuff, too. The teaching bit, that's just, yeah, we, we'll do the teaching bit of it. <laughs> exactly what you mean, though. Yes, it's plans and it's how is it all going to pan out. But, yeah, yeah, I know that feeling. Well, it, this has been a pleasure. I, I don't want to hold you too long. And I also, my, my wife wants, to, it's because it's my son's birthday tomorrow. We have, uh, do you guys have Walmarts in there? Um, we, uh, that's our Tesco's. You're saying it's your wife's birthday tomorrow. It's my husband's birthday tomorrow. That's my son's. It's my son's oh, birthday. 
sorry, sorry. Yes, yeah, my husband's birthday as well. So. so he was born on the 15th? On the 15th, yep. Yeah. Beware the Ides of March. Yes. I, I know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's funny. So your husband and my, my son share the same birthday. That's So she wants to go to Walmart and buy a bunch of cupcakes to bring to school for him. So I need to uh, make sure that I don't get in trouble um, <laughs> oh, keeping no. us from getting cupcakes. <laughs> No, it's been a real pleasure and really interesting as well. Fun yeah, and, and we can definitely catch up again in the future. This doesn't have to be a one-time ever chat. So, Excellent. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. And maybe even we could have several of us. Now I know how it works. We Actually, I don't see why we couldn't, right? Yeah, that would be good. No, it's going to be really interesting. There are some periods. Right now, your, your image and everything is fantastic. But there were points during this. I don't know if it was the same for you, yeah. where... It was really bad, so I'm going to be interested to see if Google's smart enough to put all it together, or if it's going to be what I was seeing or what you were seeing. Right, yeah, like like you, my little picture's been good. You you went a bit blurry at times, so yeah, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, and by the way, Rachel, if people want to find you, it's do you guys have the custom URL with YouTube already? Yes, it's I think it's actually Ukuleleans Ukulele Club, but I'm pretty. Okay. Sure you did a search for ukulele and so you'd find us quite quick. And you don't have any other websites or anything yet? Not at the minute, no. I've, I've got a few, nothing to do with music. So no, as soon, as soon as I've got something, I will let you know, definitely. And I don't know if you guys have Teespring in the UK or not as a, as a company, but you actually might want to make your, your, your T-shirt available as a fundraiser outside yeah. and beyond. Yeah, something, no, I I mean, I hadn't thought of it. it was, we got t-shirts just to do a concert when we first started. Um, but yeah, something definitely worth thinking about. Mm. Especially Now, who did the design there? Was that all you? That's me, I'm afraid. I love playing with graphics. <laughs> that I enjoy doing. So yes, that, that's my design. That's I've always been, fun. Sorry, I've, I've even got it on a mug as well. Oh, do you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I, I love it. If you guys haven't seen the Ukuleleans logo... Just check out the website. It's kind of fun. And it's fun how you drop that in. And, and my students are always like, where that comes? You know, I, I don't try to do anything splashy like that. You know, I just have the little Uke stuff logo now at the beginning. And that's it for branding for me. So it's kind of like, all right, it's kind of fun. No, oh, that, that's a fun bit for me. I like, I enjoy messing about like that. So How do, yeah. how do the kids react to that? Oh, they love it. They, they, they enjoy it. And it, as I said, some of the kids have got T-shirts of their own, but they, they'll see me wearing my T-shirt and they'll see that bit at the end and go, oh, that was her T-shirt, right. And then they, they put it all together. Some of them don't even realize I've made the video, I don't think. So yes. that helps as well. Well, if you ever do put those on Teespring, let us know and we'll, we'll spread the word. Cool, cool. Awesome. Well, thank you, Rachel, for your time today. Thank and you, Anne. And we'll be seeing you, obviously, on the Facebook ukulele group. And, and I really do appreciate learning more about your program and sharing what you do with us. Excellent. And a big thank you to you, because without you, we wouldn't all be getting together like this. So, bravo. Thank you very much. Well, it's, it's a pleasure. So, it'll be interesting to see how this video works out. Crossing my fingers, it'll be good. Excellent. Right. I Do I just say goodbye? Yeah, we can say goodbye. So. Okay.